Hey guys. All right, I wanted to go over another dream that I had, and this dream was about my little niece who was five. Okay, my little niece who was five. All right, before I begin the dream, I know this dream came from asking the Lord and praying to the Lord all the time that he bless, spiritually bless my niece and my nephews. All right, with your children, five, six. And then I have a baby, baby nephew now who was recently born. And I just prayed to the Lord that he would reveal himself to my nieces and my nephews so that they may know him for real, that they may they themselves may have a confirmation that Christ is Lord and God is real, even though they believe that he is now because of what we teach them, what my brothers teach them. All right. And both them, both my niece and my nephews, they love the Lord dearly. Love him, love him. Okay. Well, this is a prayer that I uh, pray to God. Because though we tell them, and children believe everything that you say to them, that's why it's important to speak truth and truth only. Though the world may say that there is no God, but the world in itself is deceived. So we tell the nieces and nephews, or I tell my nieces and my nephews, or they know already that God is real and Christ is real because they love them. They love him. I said, Lord, we tell them, but I pray that you come to them in a dream. You reveal yourself to them in a dream so that they may have that confirmation and not lean on ours. Okay? So they can lean on ours, and then as they get older, they go into the world. And these atheists and these other religions tell them that there is no God, that Christ isn't real, that your mother and your father lied to you, all right? That's how, that's what they do. That's how they mess up, that's how they mess up the children's mind. That's how Satan attacks them. Satan attacks the children by sending his, his servants, his people. And that is his people. Oh, God isn't real. Evolution. When the kids begin when the kids begin to go to school, they teach evolution. Evolution itself is a religion. So they force they forcing this evolution on our children and expecting these children to believe and these children are now confused because they trust these adults to tell them the truth. Well my niece and my nephews, when they ask either their dad or their mom or their grandmother or me something they automatically expect the truth. They, when, you, when, when you tell them something, they don't ask, is this the truth? No. They expect you to tell the truth. This is how God has created us. When God told Adam and Eve, do not eat from the forbidden fruit, they heard him. They didn't ask, oh God, is that the truth? We will die? No, they didn't ask. They, God told them the truth. And God expected them. To hold on to that truth because he wouldn't lie to them. Yet yeah, that's when the serpent comes and twists the truth, manipulating their minds. Okay? So we tell the truth. We speak the truth to these children. But I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, can you please reveal yourself to my niece and my nephew so that they can get a confirmation that you are Lord, that you are Christ? Okay? So I'll be praying this. I'll just pray about this, that the Lord will do this. And then one night I had a dream. In my dream, <clears throat> my little niece came up to me, and she was so happy in this dream. All right, she was happy in this dream. She said, Titi, I had a dream. I seen Jesus in my dream. I mean, she was... Happy, cheek to cheek, smiling, happy, joyful. Mind you, she loves Jesus. And she says it. She said, I love Jesus and I miss him. That's what she says. This, this, this ain't nothing but the Lord touching her heart. The Lord has these children's heart. And he reveals himself to them. They have no doubt. Like I said, children automatically believe what you say. That's why you must speak truth. 
Okay? You must speak truth. And one thing I, lo I love about my brothers, they don't tell my nieces and my nephews that Santa Claus is real. Those people, those people will be like, oh, why, why, why can't you just do No, he's not real. Okay? That's why I say, if you speak truth to this child, this child will always believe everything you say. He tells them, they tell them that grandma got you this, that TT got you this, that daddy got you this, that mommy got you this. They don't send a clause. All right? All right, so in this dream, my niece came up to me and said, TT, I had a dream. I see Jesus in my dream. She was just smiling, joyful. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I was excited. I was happy. I was overwhelmed. Because I said, the Lord answered my prayer, the Lord answered my prayer, the Lord answered my prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Christ, that they know now, okay? And then she just began to spew out. I didn't ask her. I was just still rejoicing and thanking the Lord. All right? The straight thing she said, she said, he's mixed, but a little darker. And that just threw me off. I was like, it just came out of nowhere that she said that. She said he's mixed, but a little darker. But the thing is, in my dream when I woke up, I was like, mixed, but a little darker, like a question mark. All right? But the thing is, I didn't know if she even knew what the word mixed, which... In our definition, that is that is being a uh, that is that is a, bi a person that's biracial. So she was saying that he's biracial, but a bit tanner, but a bit darker. All right. So uh, days after that dream, I text my brother, and I asked. I was like, "Does she know what mixed mean? What biracial mean?" He was like, I don't believe she knows what that means. And he said he would ask her, ask her when he get a chance. All right, so I'm still waiting on a response from that. I mean, I didn't ask her about that. That's what was uh, kind of weird. Because as I was rejoicing and praying to the Lord, thanking the Lord for revealing himself, thanking Christ for revealing himself to my little niece, so, sad, so that she may have a confirmation. My niece herself in my dream began to go into details without me go asking her, okay? So that's what she said. And after that, I was upset. I told her, I was like, well, what did he say to you? She replied, he said, I forgive y'all. That's what she said. She said, he said, I forgive y'all. And it's not I forgive you. I forgive y'all. Everyone. He said, I forgive you all. All right. And with this dream, it threw me for a loop. Because um, at the beginning of my walk, I seen a YouTube video where uh, a little girl also, she actually had this dream. A little girl had a dream. A little, I think she, I don't know where her nationality was. She had a dream that she seen Christ. Okay. She seen Christ and Christ told her the same exact thing. But Christ said that she he forgave her, the little girl. That's what the girl was explaining to her dad. She was about like seven or eight. Christ told her, I forgive you. All right. But in my dream, that's what my little niece said. I can't decline it. I can't say, oh, this dream was not sent from the Lord. Okay? Because the thing is, <clears throat> the Jewish nation, it just it doesn't consist of just one color. I've seen black Jews. I've seen Arabic looking Jews that were not black, but they had a bit of a 
uh, uh, tan, like the color, like the color of Cubans or Puerto Ricans. Yet they were Jews. Okay, I seen white Jews that if they didn't open their mouth with an accent, you would think that they were all American, Caucasian. Okay, Jews Jews come come in different colors. Different colors. So for us to say that he's not what he is, we would be lying to ourselves because we never seen Christ. All right? To me, I don't care. I don't care what color Christ is. Whether he's white, Arabic color, a Cuban color, black, whatever. He's still Christ. It's not his color. That died on the cross for my sins. But it's his humility. His willingness to obey the Father. His love. His mercy. His kindness. Is what died for me. There's blood. That's that color that I love. That's that color that I believe in. It's red. That blood. And he washed me clean. That's that Christ that I love. All right. So I don't believe we should hold on to color. Many believe, oh, he's white. Many say he's black. Many say he's Arabic color, like a tannish color. Whatever, whatever he is, I don't care. For the Lord, he didn't say worship me in flesh. He didn't say worship me in flesh. He said, he said, do not put any grave image. Do not make any grave images. And that is also picturing him as being a certain color. He said, worship me in spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. For in spirit there is no color. For you have to understand the descendants of Abraham consist of those who believe and love Christ and obey ab abide in Christ. These are people throughout all nations. These are people throughout all nations. Chinese, okay? Japanese, African, Jamaican, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Caucasian, white. All of them descendants of Abraham. Why? Not your skin color. Not your skin color. Your faith. Your faith and what you do with that faith. You are a child of Abraham. You are a descendant of Abraham. You are a child of God. Okay? So that color thing where people are pushing, pushing, pushing. And get mad at you because you don't, because you say, I don't care. Oh, he's black. He's black. He's black. So? not. It's not that I don't care. It's like. What's the importance? There is that I don't know. There may I don't know. With this dream, maybe the Lord doesn't want her to get confused because worldly, they have many pictures of Christ being of Caucasian descent. All right, and as she get older, she will begin to explore more. Go into, go, uh, take her, uh, have her faith go deeper, or go deeper into her faith, and she may explore and want to know how does Christ look, how does God look, and go online and see this Caucasian image. And yet the Lord, in her dream, in the dream, revealed Himself. This is what I, I had a dream that she had a dream. This that this didn't happen for real. But in that dream, this is what I got. She said, mix, but a little darker. It's like an Arabic. If you've seen uh, <clears> the <throat> Arabic color. But yet still, I don't worship flesh, color. I worship spirit. I worship spirit for when we see... Christ's final arrival, his second coming. And we will stand before him. We will see him for what he is and who he is, which still that wouldn't matter. 
But when I see him, I will see him as being a man of forgiveness, a man of mercy, a man of peace, a man of power. And that's the man that I love. That's the man I gave my life to. That's the man I made a decision to marry. If you watch my other video about if if did Christ give you a ring, then you will know and understand what I mean when I say this man that I married. My husband. That's who Christ is. He's my husband. I'm faithful to him. I love him. And I'm waiting for him to come back. We're waiting for our husband to come back. All right. I just wanted to put that video out there. That's a dream that I had after praying for my nieces and nephews. And I will continue to pray for them that the Lord may truly reveal himself to them so that they themselves may have a confirmation. So as they go out into the world that these uh, uh, Satan teachers, they work for the Satan. They work for the government. That's what the teachers are. They teach evolution. The Lord says, only a fool says in his heart that there's no God. He said, you're a fool. You are a fool. Okay? For you not to believe. And that's a great deception. Scriptures even say, Satan is a great deceiver. When scriptures say some scripture, it's truth. Scripture speaks so much truth. You'd be like, yep, that's very true. For, for if God says Satan is a great deceiver, he didn't say he didn't just say he's a deceiver. He said he's a great. That means he said he's good. This guy's good at lying, deceiving people, getting them to believe in this deception. And I see that when I when I when I look at these scientists who try to refute 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 that there is a God and saying that okay, all this just happened, that it just happened. And there's people that believe in him, believe in them, until the day they die, never having coming to, never having coming to the re, uh, re reality, the realization that there is a God. God says Satan is a great deceiver, and he deceived many. He also deceived many uh, people that profess themselves as believers. Yet they live in sin. He deceives those too, thinking that they still are right with God. Great deceiver. Great to see you. Bravo. Okay. Bravo. Yet Christ will come and throw this deceiver into the lakes of fire for going around deceiving his children. Going around deceiving his children and sending his servants, those who work for him, to deceive him even more. All right. So I thought I'd go over this dream. Y'all. Take care.